wake till three tonight. So if you want to, you know, you want to think up some ideas for tomorrow's Aki's A list. Uh, Kev Bo's in for Tyler today, and uh, he's in for everyone today, really. And uh, he's awesome. Kev Bo, what do you got for Aki's A list? All right, let's start with the uh, Bears, of course. Uh, they got the big game coming up in London on Sunday versus the Jaguars. But there uh, have been a few hiccups along the way. Of course, we found out uh, during the course of the week with the injury report, there's going to be some uh, folks that are not participating. Of course, Brisker's already been ruled out. And then today at practice, no Tevin Jenkins, Mercedes Lewis, Zach Pickens, Terrell Smith, have all, uh, all did not participate today. Which of these injuries do you think will affect the team's performance the most on Sunday? Brisker. And did these injuries give you a little creeping doubts, especially with the line moving like you were talking about earlier, Waddle? No, I don't think that the... Uh, I, I think the one thing that could bother them, I think that, that Tyreek Stevenson was listed as limited. If for whatever reason he's limited or this gets a little bit worse before game time. I think that would definitely, what was it? A calf calf. Well, then like what always scares me about those is we never know because they're never going to tell us right. is he could have started practice and then left practice with a calf injury. Right. So and you never, never returned. Right. And that's still limited because right. he started the practice right. and then got hurt. Right. So they don't clarify that until tomorrow. So we don't know the severity of any of this. Or he could have like hurt himself and come back. It's, and we I, don't know. It sounds like I, I mean, Tevin Jenkins is is. There's a really good chance he's not going to be available. I'm anticipating that, and and just be, based on what they, again, I don't know how good Bill Murray is. I don't. But based on on the way he played last week, I, I'm I'm okay with the way they are right now. I think they're probably okay with it as well because the strength of the Jacksonville defensive line is on the edge, not in the middle. So I think they feel pretty comfortable that they'll be able to get a comparable performance from the interior of their offensive line like they did against the Panthers. But to me, it's Brisker's playmaking ability, and, and he's yeah, been playing so well. They'll miss that. But, um, but if, if, if Stevenson can't go, then it's him. Yeah, because I, I agree with that. As much as I like Brisker, I think, and remember, Terrell Smith hasn't been able to practice also. So Smith would be the backup to either corner. So now if, if if Stevenson can't go, you're going with a backup to a backup as opposed to Hicks, who I think they really like, backing up Brisker. And they're getting Evan Ingram back. Brian Thomas Jr. is a really good player. Christian Kirk's a good player. Um, so if it's not Brisker, if I mean, if Stevenson is not available, to me, that would be the biggest loss. Hopefully he'll play. Does Chicago have enough room in its heart to love two Bill Murrays? Yes, of course. Absolutely. Especially if this Bill Murray, Murray can actually anchor the left guard position. I may find myself with more love for him than I do yeah. the actor. How many people uh, like of Tyler's age love the actor Bill Murray? <sighs> That's tough to say. Um, like, I, I feel like it's more people waddle in my age, Meller's age. A little bit my age, too. Yeah, I mean, Ghostbusters, uh, that Groundhog's Day. Groundhog's Day is a classic. What, what was his last good movie? What was the what serious was movie he did with uh, what's her name? The Life Aquatic. Lost in Translation. Oh, Are you well, talking that's, about? I, that's what I was. That's like way fifteen years old. Yeah, I, I think. Say. With um, but has he done a more current movie than that was really successful? Than yeah, that? I'm trying to think. What's, I think uh, my la the last movie he did that I really liked was What About Bob with Richard Dreyfuss, and that was a lifetime. That's a great movie. <laughs> what about what, the movie where he like takes in this kid? Where he's like the angry guy on the street. He, I, I think he was, and, and um, I'm not sure and, I saw and that. he goes to the kids' talent show. Wasn't that fairly recently? At least in the last ten years. I don't know if I remember what that one is. Yeah, I don't I, know if I've seen I, it. I thought it was pretty good. I think I, it's Bill Murray. I saw uh, Moonrise Kingdom is pretty good too. That's what is that? What year was that? That was 2012. Still. 12 years ago. Ang Bill Murray, angry guy. I'm trying to find what it, the Child. year that What About Bob came out. Like, oh, is that, that was the 90s, dude? That was like know. The early 90s. 91? 91. 91. That sounds about right. Was it 91? Right. What yeah. About Bob was 91. Bob Wiley was the producer, not the uh, football coach. What About but, Bob was 91? Yes. Can you believe that? Someone tweet. Oh, St. Vincent. That's what it was. Never saw Have it. you guys... Uh, a young, I, I, I like that. A young boy whose parents... 
have just divorced, finds an unlikely friend and mentor. 2014 for St. Vincent. Yeah. So, like, that's within 10 years. I, I think that may be the last Bill Murray movie I saw. I like him. But, yes, to get to your point, give me 10 Bill Murrays if they can play football. I'll take 11. All right, Maybe so, just five on the line. I don't know if how effective he'll be. <laughs> well, you need as a, as, a, as a skill position player. You don't think player? Bill Murray's a skill no. a guy's name? Were you surprised to hear that, uh, I don't know if you were listening to Carmen and Yurko when they were talking about this, that their highest rated offensive lineman is Braxton Jones? Who's highest rated? The Bears. Oh, based on, because has he not had as many boom goes the dynamite games and he's just, I, I don't, don't know. Carm was talking about the overall grades of the offensive lines. And I believe the Bears offensive line at this point has been graded 20th overall by pro football focus. And as Carm said, they highlight the best player on each line when they give the list. And their best player that they highlight, it was Braxton. Well, Jones. where does he rank amongst that he left I tackles? Did, that I don't know. He's got to be in the in the bottom half of left tackles. I would think so. The but I was surprised to hear that. I was surprised. To hear and that. plus, the the other four guys aren't that good. And Darnell Wright's having a really bad year so far. Yes. Kev? All right. There are, in my opinion, two sets of teams in the NFL. There are serious teams and there are unserious teams. Of course, the unserious ones we know, your Carolinas, your Jacksonvilles, which coincidentally... All on the Bears record the last few weeks. That's very convenient. Uh, so for the Bears to be taken seriously, to be in that first column, does this... I don't want to call it a must-win because it's not a must-win. It's October. There are no must-win games in October. But is this a need-to-win game yes. for the Bears to be taken seriously in a very difficult NFC? Yeah, because... I. Again, Big Cat said it is a must win. It depends what your definition of must win. Is it must win and you're mathematically eliminated? No. So the definition of that is no. But if you if you have to win this game because it's a winnable game and there are many games that aren't so winnable down in the stretch and you know you're not going to win all of them, you're not going to go on a long win streak. So now when you have a chance to win three in a row going into the bye week, with another big game coming up against the Commanders, do you have to win this game? I think it's pretty must winish. Yeah, I mean, look at look at the the situation. You I, I, again, being a good football team, step one or one of the the early steps is beating teams you're supposed to beat. And again, I think that this Jags team gives them some challenges, maybe that the Panthers didn't. But this is the fourth consecutive bottom five defense that they will play against. The Colts, Rams, Panthers, and now the Jags are all bottom five ranked defenses in the league. You've got to take advantage of this opportunity in this situation because the skill of the opponent is going to escalate going forward. And the, and the commanders are not the world's best defense either. And the Arizona Cardinals are hit and miss. So they will not be dominant defenses coming out of the break, but then it's going to get really hard. You've got to, you got to make hay at this moment. Yes. Yeah. Marcus uh, tweeted me and I think this was in, in response to my column. And he said, why are people assuming the Jags are garbage? They have a quarterback who is being paid as elite. They have wide receivers that must be respected. Their running game can be dangerous. They have an elite defensive end. This game is not, you better win or you're garbage. And I don't think anyone's saying that the Jags are garbage. The Jags are gettable. The Jags must be kept down while they are down. Yes. The, ja the Jags are dealing with some adversity too with their travel issues based on what happened with Florida. Um, there are lots of things that are going the Bears way here. And this is just in, in, a, in, a, in a league where there are fine lines between being a, pr a pretender and a contender as, as far as making the playoffs. These are one of those games. And I think the Colts game is going to be another one where you're going to look back on it and it's going to haunt you. And you're going to say, wow, they didn't beat the Colts. They should have beaten the Colts. The Colts weren't as good as we thought. This is a game that you've got to get. When your table is set, you must eat. The table is set for you for the reasons you mentioned. This is a Jags team that I do think that they have talent. 
their quarterback does have some skill. Like he hasn't been as consistently good as I thought he would be. He's turned the ball over more than any player in the National Football League since the start of 2021. But there is upside to him. He's got a good group inside his offensive huddle. The offensive line isn't bad. They found their way a little bit offensively last week against the Colts. They played better against the Texans two weeks ago. I think this is a much more challenging group than you saw with the Panthers last week. But with that said, their defense is horrible. They give up almost 400 yards and almost 30 points per game. Their pass defense is horrible. They play as much or more man coverage than any team in the league, and their their secondary is horrible. You're saying so, it like you're from New York. Don't people from New York say they're horrible? They're horrible. Horrible. So you have to take advantage of them while they're still down. I don't want them to catch a heater at our our you know at our expense. So you got to beat this team. Beat them. One more quick one. Sure. All right. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings are on a bye this week. Of course, they've been the best team in the NFC so far this year. They're five and zero. Uh, top of the rankings in defensive DVOA. I know Black and Abdallah don't have a show tonight, so I'll mention DVOA on their behalf. Uh, every team, of course, Waddle, as you know, they look forward to the bye week to kind of re-energize and kind of regroup, get the body feeling as right as you can. Is the bye coming too early for Minnesota? Would they have preferred to actually play this week and not have the bye so early and keep their run going? I think you would. I think you would want the buy a little bit later. I think the the buy comes at the right time for the Bears because they're coming back from from London. But I think you always would prefer to have it a few weeks later than a few weeks earlier. Kebbo, this is like uh, you're in a basketball game and you're going on a 15-0 run and you have the ball on offense and then your coach calls a timeout. You never call a timeout during an, while you're on a 15-0 run. You call a timeout while you're getting hammered with a 15-0 run when you get the ball and the other team has just scored for the 15th straight time. So, yes, they can't control this, so it's not them calling the timeout, but you don't you don't want to cool down your heater. And, and Sam Darnold, I know, didn't play as well, um, but you got to take the bye when you you get it and it's a, it's a, a draw a yeah. luck of the it's luck of the draw and i know that aaron jones is a little banged up right now but sure. th for the most part they're healthy so you would hope that like you would be getting the buy when a lot of your guys could use it so you know it's interesting and again this is they really didn't they can't control exactly when but teams that go play overseas do have the choice of whether or not they want to take the buy when they return or if they'd like it later in the year. For instance, the Jets chose not to take the buy this week, so they're playing. They obviously probably could have used the buy considering they've made a coaching change. Yeah, they, they, they make all the wrong decisions. But it's interesting, you know, they have to make the choice before the schedules, but they have the option, hey, you're going overseas, would you rather play the next week or would you rather take the buy? The Vikings probably not knowing or having any idea they'd be undefeated, chose to take the bye. I think the Bears' schedule is perfect. Yeah, I agree. Because they have six games, they have the bye, they recalibrate. Then they have, I believe it's six more games, and the sixth game is the Thanksgiving game, which is a Thursday game. And then they have the mini bye after Thanksgiving. So then they sort of recalibrate then for the last five. So it's like six, six, and five. I think that, yeah. that that's a, a good one. You split the season almost evenly in thirds. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I I hate to use, you know, the phrase from, from you know, the Wani years, but in a lot of ways, all the pieces are in place with regard to how things have unfolded. You got this group of teams back to back to back to back as your offense was trying to find its way. A rookie quarterback. You, yes, you should go into the bye now with a little bit of rhythm. You have played four of the you will have played four of the bottom five defenses in the league to go into the bye. You'll clean some stuff up. You'll come out and be poised to go after that. I, I just think it's all I, I don't think they would have beaten any other team on opening day except for Will Levis. I agree with you. That was a that was a loss turned into a win based on some of the mistakes that they're quite right, good stuff, Kevbo.